Hello everyone, welcome. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this edition of my show. My name is Kenichiola. Now, when it comes to photography, Kenichi Amadiobi is as good as it gets. I've often said that Kenichi does not take pictures and creates art. Pure, magical art. Not too long ago, we had the rare opportunity of sitting with him where he shared his unique perspective on the art form and new trends. My name is Kelechi Amadiobi. I'm a photographer, storyteller, around artist. Right from childhood, I, I had, you know, uh, gotten obsessed with the art of drawing. I was also obsessed with Marvel Comics. You know, all these comic characters, like Incredible Hulk, Spider-Man, and uh, couldn't stop drawing them. Abraria Avenue Primary School was the name of my school, and it got its name from a state library in Omaha then. And we lived next to my school. So I would go to the library and do some research on drawing. And that was how, earlier in life, I realized you could teach yourself anything. In a matter of you know, months and stuff, I realized I was much better than my peers at doing this. And that was how I discovered um, that this was something I could do much better than most people. And it gave me a sense of purpose. I went to secondary school and then from there I couldn't stop drawing also. I went to university, well, to study law because, well, then there was no other course to study in my house. It was law and medicine. But while I was in school, I would say I was studying law part-time and practicing art full-time. In fact, uh, I started a business in school called The Zulu. That was my, the name of my brand. And we used to make posters and cards and things in school. And that was when I realized that I could make a career, you know, out of this talent that I had. Came to Lagos for law school. And immediately after that, I decided to be a full-time studio artist. So I started painting oil paint, watercolors, and things like that. I had my first major exhibition at the Russian Cultural Center in 1997. And um, from then on, you know, my, my career as a painter was on the rise. Photography came very gradually. I realized that I needed to follow the light. And the better the light got, the stronger my paintings. And to manipulate the light, I needed to understand the crafts of photography. That was when I started looking at, you know, advanced levels of exposure. And, um, and then I, I started hanging out with photographers. You know, I went to a dark room and saw paper, you know, turn into imagery. And I was completely hooked. I was fascinated. Just like every other thing, I got obsessed with photography. And Gradually, people started looking at the photos and started saying, hey, you know, you could exhibit this also uh, in conjunction, you know, together with your paintings. And that was how I started having a joint exhibition of paintings and photographs. Then I got invited to, to, to Bamako, Mali in 2000 for this, uh, by now, huge uh, international photography expose that happens in Mali every two years. That was where we formed a group called Depth of Field. Myself, which is James Firoha, T.Y. Bello, and then she was Tony Shokefu, and Andamizer Jekere, you know, son of famous power Jekere. And Depth of Field then was for us to encourage ourselves to continue making fine art photography. Because at that point in time in Nigeria, most people didn't know that photography was art. They were still debating whether photography was art. We pretty much took off. It was like a band. We started exhibiting all over the world, from Germany to New York to London um, to Brussels, everywhere. And photography completely took over. And then after a while, people started looking. People started asking, can we commission you to do shoot for us? And that was how Kelechi Amadiobi Studios was born. The rules of visuality are the same. All the things I learned as a painter, you know, all the color theory, design, lines, you know, the composition, all those things also apply to photography. So me moving into photography was quite interesting. I'd had about 
20 years of experience as a visual artist. So learning how to use the camera just added to that. It was like you're painting oil, now you're doing watercolor. Got to live in the future. If you're living in the present, you're already too late. The medium that is based on technology, you know, the art of capturing light. I'm comfortable with change. I mean, that is what attracted me to art in the first place. You know, this whole journey of discovery that art is. And with more technology and with newer things that are added, creates more mystery, more things to discover. And for me, that is really beautiful. There is something that's an intrinsic part of the art of photography, which is the art of seeing, which comes as a result of each individual's unique blend of experiences. No matter how much technology uh, tries, maybe sometime in the future, they will create artificial intelligence that can become, that can have a soul. But right now, what people pay for is your ability to see the world in a, your specific, unique way. People are learning to appreciate that it's not just pointing your camera and shooting. Everybody now appreciates what it takes to make a great masterpiece of a, of a photograph, to control your light, to wait for the decisive moment, to understand composition and make mind-blowing images over and over and over again. What has happened is that all this technology in the hands of ordinary people has compelled them, has shown them how difficult it is to make images, making professional photographers even more relevant. My major inspiration is to know what the story is. What is the narrative? What are you saying about this person? What is the message you're trying to pass? So for me, photography in itself is a means to an end, not the end in itself. It is the means through which we can communicate. What I want to say is quite subjective. It is based on my experiences and my biases. And that is what inspires me. And that is the unique thing about my work. Because, well, my experiences are unique. No other human being on earth has the same. I always, I want to call myself a storyteller. There is no difference between what we do now and the old men who were under a tree, you know, telling stories, you know, uh, by, by the moonlight in the, you know, in, in, in the pre-colonial days. So the idea is how do we express what we see and what we feel? How are we telling the story of our times? How are we chronicling history? And um, photography, painting, Cinematography, they're all medium through which you can express yourself. I always enjoy to, to, to dabble into areas where I know very little and enjoy the reward of finally, finally getting to know those things. And, and cinematography has such a steep you know, learning curve and the power of cinematography is unprecedented. I decided to start a vlog um, basically because, well, it, it provides me with the why, the reason to make movies, you know? So it's, it's an environment that compels me to, to tell my story and create videos and do that on a regular basis. The movies I'm making are really telling stories about the creativity involved in my photography and my day-to-day -day activities um, as a, a storyteller, which at the end of the day is sort of extending the stories I'm telling in stills into mini documentaries, you know, um, that then encompass all this multimedia world. And um, I, I think it's really a natural direction to go in. I couldn't stop looking at those beautiful fashion photos in, in, in glossy magazines like Vogue and Elle and you know, Vanity Fair. And I was in complete awe of all these photographers, Anna Livovitz, Mario Testino, Hardbridge, you know, all these powerful creators you know, in the West. And I thought, well, these people are using the medium of fashion photography to tell their story, to push their culture. And, and completely dominate the world with their point of view. 
I just started shooting fashion, even without a fashion magazine. That was it, you know, th that is how I work. And I say, you know what, let's just do it. You know? We started shooting um, just models. I see people, regular folks, any tall, slim girl. Got my friend who's a designer and he starts putting clothes on them. And uh, I met by a house shop, he started making makeup and the group started doing hair. That was how we formed the team of, you know, creatives making these fashion photos purely out of our own passion. Then came in um, True Love magazine from South Africa. It wasn't a fashion magazine, it was a lifestyle magazine, but they had a fashion editorial. And they had, well, coming from South Africa, they had a culture of how these things are done. And somebody um, mentioned that I had a collection of fashion photos. And they called me, I showed them, and they said, oh, you know, you can shoot our fashion. And that was how I started shooting from just shooting and looking at the thing and said, oh boy, see Woko, to you know, being paid and being properly published. That was how my journey into the world of fashion, photography and publishing started. So I started enjoying it, I got hooked on it. Well, after some years, trials, uh, the um, True Love magazine sort of folded up and I started working for Next, uh, what's it called, uh, there's, a, there's a pull-out magazine, you know, Elan. And we used to do these fashion editorials every week. So it was fashion editorials four in a month. And then the magazine closed down. <laughs> so there I was, a fashion photographer without a fashion magazine. I just said, okay, that's it. I'm going to start publishing my own magazine. That was how we started Mania Magazine. We did this for seven years. Every edition was a journey of discovery, basically to create an environment, to create the why in order to do the work going to be reborn as an online magazine and watch out now it's not just stills it's video it's multimedia it's interactive it's important for me to understand who i am and who i am becoming the work that i do is what becomes of me and it is the why that 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 motivates whatever work i'm doing so all the time i have to constantly be in the in, in the situation where I question who I am. Who am I? What is my role? What is my legacy? What do I leave? What prints do I leave on the sands of time? And it is that constant questioning of one's position that sort of crystallizes and creates the work. Contemporary Nigerian woman is well, Nigerian woman has always been very confident, um, conscious of what she looks like, and determined, and quite, quite um, focused. I'm comparing the Nigerian woman with uh, women I've seen in the rest of Africa. I will never break my promise to my client. I will get Nigerians to stand up for their rights. One is a lack of self-confidence, Two is a lack of discipline to push through. Three is a lack of vision. Three things I consider a fashion flop. Well, don't have a pot belly and wear the tight stuff. <laughs> don't go on high heels that you don't know how to walk in. Don't match all the colors. <laughs> Three things that you need as an aspiring photographer that cannot be bought. One is a strength of character. And two, integrity. The third one is the hunger for knowledge. The principles that guide my life, I, I, I believe that the reality of life is now. I believe in the present. You know, I believe that I must find joy in the process, the process of creativity in itself. In the course of conducting this interview, I had the privilege of acting as Kelechi's muse. And boy, he surely put me through the paces. I want to give you a sneak peek in some of the magic that we created.
Oh my word, you have to agree that those pictures are absolutely breathtaking. As I said, Kenichi doesn't take photographs, he creates art. Welcome back. Now, you know what they say, practice makes perfect. By virtue of the fact that this individual has had to do the same thing over and over and over again since he was seven years old, arguably makes him one of the most prolific actors of his generation. He's young, he's dashing, and give it maybe a decade more or so, he's poised to step into the very big shoes of the likes of an RMD. Now it's time to get up close and personal with a young man known as Dozi. My name is Dozi Onyoka, Una Dozi Onyoka. Um, from Imo State. I'm 16 years old. I'm a student and I'm an actor. Okay, I joined Tinsel in the year 2008. Um, a cousin of mine knew someone that worked over there and she got to know that they needed a boy of seven years. And I was the only one she knew that was seven years old. So she came and talked to my parents and then they agreed, surprisingly. I wasn't really excited though, but as time went on, the excitement, the passion started catching on. Uh, I never thought I would actually get to that point because I never thought of being an actor. The challenges were the people, sometimes me and my education. Me in the sense that uh, people would tell me that, oh, no, what you're doing, it'll affect your studies and I'm, maybe I should stop or maybe I should continue. And then the challenge itself, um, committing my time to acting and school at the same time. At first it was too much. Sometimes I would overcome it and then after a while it just comes back to me. Should I continue? Should I stop? But something in my mind keeps telling me to just keep pushing, keep going and eventually there will be light at the end of the tunnel. Part of what made my journey easy regard, uh, regardless of the challenges was mostly my mother. She is my, I call her my momager. She's my manager, my mom, so my momager. So every time I have these challenges, I'm do, I always come to her, I always talk to her about these challenges, and she'll be like, Dozie, don't worry, just calm down. Everything's going to be fine. She'll be like, Dozie, don't worry, just keep pushing. And also be prayerful. Also be prayerful. Don't let anyone bring you down. Don't let what anyone says get to you. Because um, what I do, people, people haven't gotten there yet, so they envy they envy what I do, so they're trying to just bring me down, bring me down to their level, as she said. But you can't go down because you're way up. Acting was probably the last thing on my mind when I ventured into tinsel, rather acting. Uh, I always thought I'd become a doctor, maybe a scientist, I guess. <laughs> but the thing is, it just came. Dread it, run from it, destiny still arrives. Right now, I want to be, I'm already what I want to be but I want to work on developing myself into getting to bigger, bigger, um, higher levels rather, um, trying to develop myself. I was thinking of diversifying because 
I already had this thought because I'm an actor already, so why do I need to study this? And on the other hand, I'm an actor, so you need to know what you actually do. You need to learn more about it. But I feel like I should just diversify and maybe later I'll just come back to it and then improve on it. So maybe something into writing and you know other things that add to my career, not just acting itself. Can I have some eggs? No. I said no. I can't ask you for egg and you're taking my own eggs. I have to say, sometimes it can get very annoying because I don't go where I want to go on my own sometimes. And I don't, when I go out and I get the attention, sometimes it's like, sometimes I feel like maybe I don't want this right now, maybe later, but I can't just push them away. You have to embrace them sometimes. Uh, you don't get the freedom you want. Because when you go out, there are people that keep pointing and all that. Sometimes I feel uncomfortable with it, but at the same time, it's what I got, so I can't, I can't change who I am. After a few years, a few years on Tinsel, I did a movie called Journey to Self. I think that was my first ever movie. And then the years after, I did another one with um, Ramzino and Omonio Boli, that's my wife and I. But growing up with um, older colleagues was kind of... Uh, challenging because I thought I'm the only kid here, so I don't really fit in. As time went on, we started mixing up, you know, sometimes when I make mistakes, I get corrected. I get tips as I keep working. I learn from, I draw this kind of energy from you guys. I learn as I act with you guys, I learn more. My honest opinion about my initiatives is um, we're like way behind. We're developing, yes, but we're still behind. I think we should all join hands together, put more effort in developing ourselves, mostly because we're the ones that bring about the change in the country. I feel like people my age sometimes um, cannot involve in um, building of the nation yet because sometimes the opportunities are, are, are not just there. When the opportunity comes, we grab it and the opportunities for people our age are very slim these days. Yeah, so I feel like at this stage we should learn. We should learn from the mistakes of our older, our older ones and try and um, enhance it, try and change it up a bit. So when we grow into them, we will make the same mistakes that they did. Instead, we'll make a change. For Nollywood, would be Ramsey Noah. I really love the way he pours out the character. Um, I like his acting, and then I think abroad would be probably Robert Downey Jr. or Grant Gustin. Yeah, I really, I like, I really like the way their careers are going right now. They're having a good run for themselves, actually. So I've always dreamt of maybe being like one of them and getting further, getting out there. You know, style to me, uh, I think it, it's a way of showcasing yourself, your taste to the public. Hey, what advice I have for people like me? Um, I would say just keep pushing. Don't stop, no matter what anyone says, just don't stop. If you have a dream, focus on it. Just keep focusing on it and be prayerful. Be prayerful, be close to God, pray all, all the time about it, and then eventually you must get there. My guiding principle in life is humility, pure humility. Um, just be humble, be humble, and then you're gonna get right up, you're gonna go higher. He's cute, yeah, and I have no doubt that he will go far. You know how it is, we've come to the end of this edition of our show. I hope you enjoyed it. Follow us on all our social media handles, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We'd love to know what you think. Now, till I come your way with another edition of this show, look after yourselves and let's be kind to one another. <laughs>